Chromium is a hard steel gray metal that is highly resistant to oxidation. It is the sixth most abundant element in the Earth's crust, where it exists combined with iron and oxygen in the form of chromite ore. Chromium exists in three stable valence states, 0, 3, and 6. Trivalent chromium and hexavalent chromium are the most biologically significant. Chromium-3 is an essential dietary mineral in low doses. Chromium-6 is carcinogenic and a thousand times more toxic. It is used in three basic industries, metallurgical, chemical, and refractory. In the metallurgical industry, it is an important component of stainless steels and various metal alloys. Chrome alloys are used in chrome cobalt joint replacement prostheses. In the chemical industry, chromium is used in chrome plating, leather tanning, paint pigments, wood treatments, drilling muds, and copy machine toners. Refractory uses include magnesite chrome fire brick for metallurgical furnace linings and granular chromite for various other heat resistant applications. As an essential dietary nutrient, chromium is required to potentiate insulin and is needed for normal glucose metabolism. Trivalent chromium deficiency has been associated with cardiovascular disease, decreased lean body mass, elevated percent body fat, impaired glucose tolerance, impaired fertility, and maturity onset diabetes. Chromium-3 is found in most fresh foods and drinking water. Dietary sources rich in chromium-3 are breads, cereals, fish, fresh vegetables, meats, brewer's yeast, and beer. The National Academy of Sciences has established a safe and adequate daily intake for chromium-3. For adults, it's between 50 to 200 micrograms per day. Environmental sources of exposure of chromium are abundant. Chromium is released into the air primarily by stationary fuel combustion processes and metal industries. Releases of chromium into the water are largely from electroplating, leather tanning, and textile industries. Other environmental sources are cement producing plants and tobacco smoke. The general population is exposed most often by the ingestion of chromium found in soil, food, and water. A small percent of exposure comes from inhaling ambient air. OSHA has mandated a permissive exposure limit of 5 micrograms per meters cubed. The current EPA maximum contaminant level for chromium in drinking water is 100 micrograms per liter. Chromium-6 has a better absorption in lungs, gut, and skin as compared to chromium-3. Once absorbed into the bloodstream, chromium-6 is rapidly taken up by erythrocytes, where it is reduced to chromium-3 by the action of glutathione. Regardless of the source, Chromium-3 is widely distributed in the body and accounts for most of the chromium in plasma or tissue. Excretion of absorbed chromium occurs primarily through the urine. The kidney excretes about 60% of an absorbed chromium-6 dose in the form of chromium-3 within 8 hours of ingestion. Approximately 10% of an absorbed dose is eliminated by biliary excretion, with smaller amounts excreted in hair, nails, milk, and sweat. When inhaled, chromium compounds are respiratory tract irritants that can cause pulmonary sensitization. Chronic inhalation of chromium-6 compounds increases the risk of lung, nasal, and sinus cancers. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, the Department of Health and Human Services, the World Health Organization, and the International Agency for Research on Cancer all agree that chromium has carcinogenic effects. The latency for chromium-6 induced lung cancer can be greater than 20 years. Chromium often causes a skin sensitizing effect in the general public. Severe dermatitis and usually painless skin ulcers can result from contact with chromium-6 compounds. In regard to the kidneys, occupational exposure to chromium-3 does not appear to be associated with any renal effects. Some studies indicate that the renal tubular damage that can occur after low-dose exposure to chromium-6 is reversible. Some hexavalent chromium compounds, such as potassium dichromate and chromium trioxide, are caustic and irritating to gastrointestinal mucosal tissue and can cause mild to severe liver abnormalities. An ingestion of a lethal dose of chromate can result in cardiovascular collapse. The reproductive effects of chromium on humans has not been adequately investigated. 
What is known is that chromium-6 compounds are teratogenic in animals. Hexavalent chromium compounds induced DNA damage, gene mutation, sister chromatid exchange, and chromosomal aberrations in a number of targets, including animal cells in vivo and animal and human cells in vitro. Acute poisoning is likely to occur through oral ingestion, whereas chronic poisoning is mainly from inhalation or skin contact and are rarely occupational or environmental. Severe exposures to hexavalent chromium are usually accidental or intentional. Significant acute oral exposure may cause intense gastrointestinal irritation or ulceration and corrosion, epigastric pain, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea and fever, vertigo, muscle cramps, toxic nephritis, renal failure, cardiovascular collapse, liver damage, multi-system organ failure, coma, and even death. In the occupational setting, the most commonly reported effects of chronic chromium exposure are contact dermatitis and irritation and ulceration of the nasal mucosa. Repeated skin contact with chromium dusts can lead to incapacitating eczematous dermatitis with edema. Chromate dust can also produce irritation of the conjunctiva and mucous membranes, nasal ulcers and perforations, keratitis, gingivitis, and periodontitis. When a solution of chromate contacts the skin, it can produce penetrating lesions known as chrome holes or chrome ulcers, particularly in areas where a break in the epidermis is already present. Common sites include finger webs, knuckles, the back of the hands, and forearms. Chronic inhalation exposure can result in bronchitis, rhinitis, sinusitis, or the formation of nasal mucosal polyps. The most serious long-term effect is lung cancer. In the workup for a patient with suspected chromium toxicity, direct biologic testing, such as measuring the chromium levels in blood and urine, is at present the most reliable assessment. Keep in mind, however, chromium rapidly clears from the blood, so all measurements relate only to recent exposure over the previous one or two days. The full workup for patients with a known history of chronic chromium exposure. The thorough evaluation includes a complete exposure history, CBC, renal function tests, hepatic function tests, urinalysis, chest x-ray, spirometry, and a full dermatological examination. There is no proven antidote for chromium poisoning. The treatment for cases of acute high-level chromium poisoning is usually supportive, focusing on relieving symptoms. Acute poisoning is often fatal, regardless of therapy. Treatment consists of removal of the patient from further chromic exposure, fostering the body's natural rapid clearance of the metal, symptom relief management, gastric lavage with magnesium hydroxide, or another antacid may be useful in cases of chromium ingestion. Induced vomiting is contraindicated. Hemodialysis may be necessary in the setting of renal failure. A 10% EDTA ointment may facilitate removal of chromium scabs. Weeping dermatitis may be treated with a 1% aluminum acetate wet dressing. Chrome ulcers may be treated with a topical ascorbic acid. Physicians should provide advice and patient education regarding smoking cessation, how to avoid or minimize exposures to other known pulmonary carcinogens, and general preventive health measures. Examples of districts that are at risk include District 1 District 2 District 6 District 7 District 8 District 12